It's June 2nd, 2010, and Armando Galarraga was one out away from history. In this game, 26 outs have been recorded, and no Cleveland batter had reached base. Perfect games are exceptionally around baseball, and the fans were on their feet, hoping to witness history. As Galarraga got the last batter to ground out, Bedlam broke out in Comerica Park in celebration for about half a second. He's out! No! He's safe! Then, the crowd realized that umpire Jim Joyce had called the runner safe, even though he was out. Replays showed that even clearer. But at this point in MLB history, replay had not yet been invented. The call could not be reviewed or overturned. Therefore, because Joyce had called the runner safe, he was, and it was called an infield hit, getting rid of the perfect game. Galarraga got the next player out, coming inches close to history. This officially was not called a perfect game, because in a perfect game, everything has to be perfect. The umps, the fielders, the pitcher. That night, first base umpire Jim Joyce rewatched the play and held an impromptu press conference. This isn't a call. This is a history call. And there's nobody that feels worse than I do. And I took a perfect game away from that kid over there that worked his ass off all night. I don't know what else to say. I mean, I don't know what else to say. Joyce privately apologized to Galarraga, and the following day, Galarraga presented the lineup card of the Tigers to Joyce on the field. There have been over 235,000 MLB games ever. Only 23 of them have been perfect. The rules of a perfect game are simple. 27 men come to the plate and 27 get out. No errors, no walks, no hit by pitches, no catcher's interference. No one can reach first. You need nine, one, two, three innings. Plus, your team has to win. Now, it's impossible for the opposing team to score without any base runners, but the team that the pitcher is pitching for has to score run one run. Of the 23 men who have pitched perfect games, many of them were Hall of Famers, aces, Cy Young winners, Cy Young himself. But some were random guys, men who never had good seasons, average, below average players who got one moment of glory. A perfect game is baseball's ultimate single game achievement. The stories of those who couldn't finish the job are sometimes just as interesting as the men who did. On June 3, 1995, a young pitcher for the Montreal Expos named Pedro Martinez pitched nine perfect innings. Pedro would one day become the best pitcher in baseball, but this start predated that era by a few years. Though he'd gotten 27 up and 27 down, it was not a perfect game yet because his Expos hadn't scored a run. In the top of the 10th, they did, and they led 1-0. Pedro looked to go out in the 10th to complete the first ever perfect game more than nine innings long. However, the first batter against him got a double. The Expos eventually won this game 1-0, but it was not a perfect game. In 1959, Harvey Haddix of the Pittsburgh Pirates pitched nine perfect innings. Only trouble was that, just like Pedro, the game was tied 0-0. And back in those days, bullpens were rarely used. So Haddix went out and pitched a perfect 10th, a perfect 11th, and a perfect 12th. He had gotten 36 batters up and 36 batters out, but his Pirates couldn't score. This was perhaps the greatest game a pitcher had ever pitched. It hadn't happened since, and it's never happened again. However, in the 13th inning, an error by the Pirates' second baseman led to a sacrifice bunt, an intentional walk of Hank Aaron, and a walk-off double by Braves player Joe Adcock. Harvey Haddix pitched 12 perfect innings, something no one ever did and no one will certainly ever do again, and took the loss. At least, Harvey Haddix got the chance to pitch in the late innings. In 2022, Clayton Kershaw, a future Hall of Famer, was pitching a perfect game after seven innings. Despite the three Cy Young Awards, Kershaw had never gotten to this point in a game having a perfect game still going. It was a truly historical moment playing out at Minnesota's target field. Kershaw had not even thrown that many pitches, but manager Dave Roberts stuck to his guns and did not want Kershaw to re-injure himself and took him out of the game. Shortly thereafter, the Dodgers bullpen blew it. Other perfect games have been broken up by umpires. Before Armando Galarraga, there was Milt Pappas. Milt Pappas wasn't just a pitcher whose name was fun to say. He was a really good pitcher in the 1970s. One day in Wrigley Field, he had gotten 26 men out in a row and had an 0-2 count on the last batter. If he just struck him out, he would have had a perfect game. But the next four pitches were all taken and all called balls. Some of those were questionable at best. The ball's on the outside corner. It's got to be strike three. Framing doesn't do anything, which means it's ball four. And I just I just saw red. I went into a tirade. There's a high fly ball. Pappas ended up getting a no-hitter. 
but the elusive perfect game evaded his grasp. Other pitchers never really got a shot to pitch a perfect game. In 1917, Babe Ruth, then a pitcher for the Boston Red Sox, walked the first batter of the game, argued with the ump about the ball calls, and got ejected. Along came Ernie Shore out of the Red Sox bullpen. Shore proceeded to get 27 straight Washington Senators out. It was called a combined no-hitter, where one of the pitchers didn't even get an out. Had Shore just started that game, it would have been a perfect game. Almost as many perfect games as there have been, have there been perfect games that were lost at the very last second. In 2015, Max Scherzer had gotten 26 Pittsburgh Pirates out when Jose Tabata didn't get out of the way of a fastball that ran a bit inside. It hit him and he took first base. There is a hit by pitch rule that technically says that if a player doesn't get out of the way, the hit by pitch does not count and it is just called a ball. But this is rarely enforced. Therefore, Tabata took first and Scherzer got a no hitter instead. Hugh Darvish, Mike Mussina, Ron Robertson, and Dave Steeb all lost perfect games with hits on their last batter. Brian Holman of the Seattle Mariners gave up a home run to his 27 batters. Many pitchers pitched no hitters where the only base runner was from an error. The bottom line is, is that human beings aren't perfect. Baseball players aren't perfect, umpires aren't, and pitchers aren't. A perfecto is so rare because everything has to work out. So who are the lucky men who have actually been able to finish the job? He got it. In 2009, White Sox manager Ozzie Guillen put in career backup center fielder Dwayne Wise as Mark Burley entered the ninth inning with a perfect game. The first batter of that inning hit a long fly ball to deep left center field where Wise leaped up to try to catch it. Wise's incredible catch was the 25th out of the game for Mark Burley. He got the next two, finishing the job, getting a perfect game. The most historical moments in baseball history happen under the brightest lights with the most people watching. But a perfect game can happen anytime. In 1988, Tom Browning of the Cincinnati Reds pitched a perfect game with a one-third full Riverfront Stadium. The game had been delayed two hours and 27 minutes and started at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Once, however, the brightest lights combined with the incredible feat of a perfect game. And a perfect game didn't just happen in the playoffs, not just in the World Series, but in a pivotal Game 5 of a World Series tied 2-2. In 1956, Yankees pitcher Don Larson didn't even know he was starting Game 5 of the World Series until less than a day before. But that day, he would make baseball history. Larson didn't wave off Yankee catcher Yogi Berra once. They called a brilliant game together, getting all 26 Brooklyn Dodgers out. When strike three was called on batter 27, Berra leaped onto Larson, creating one of baseball's most famous shots. Larson reflected on the day. People said I didn't do enough in my career. Maybe they're right, but I had one great day. In between the countries of Honduras and Costa Rica lies Nicaragua. Though many Puerto Rican and Dominican players have impacted Major League Baseball, only 12 Nicaraguans have played in the majors. The first one was a pitcher named Dennis Martinez. Born the last of seven children to a poor farming family in Nicaragua, Martinez came up with the Baltimore Orioles in 1976 and became a solid starting pitcher. However, alcoholism kept Dennis from becoming his best self. In 1983, he didn't start a game in the World Series for the Orioles because they didn't trust him to be sober the day before. One night in Baltimore, he was arrested for driving under the influence of alcohol. When Martinez tried to explain the situation to his children, he could see the disappointment in their eyes. He vowed to get better and started attending Alcoholics Anonymous meetings. Traded to Montreal, Dennis Martinez remade his career over the next few seasons. In 1991, everything was coming together. He led the NL in ERA that year, and on one sunny summer day in Dodger Stadium, everything for the man called El Presidente was perfect. Martinez said what meant the most to him about his accomplishment was when he went home to Nicaragua and he was celebrated as a hero. In his second career start, Roy Halladay was pitching a no-hitter with two outs in the ninth inning for the Toronto Blue Jays. It was then broken up by a home run. But this began a 15-year run of dominance by the pitcher given the nickname Doc based on the Wild West figure he shared his surname with. In 2010, now with the Philadelphia Phillies, Roy Halladay pitched a game at Marlins Stadium, first named Pro Player Park, then Pro Player Stadium, then Dolphin Stadium, then Dolphin Stadium, then Landshark Stadium, then Sun Life Stadium, then New Miami Stadium, then Hard Rock Stadium. But in this game, in 2010, Halladay was perfect. Hit toward third. Castro has it. Spins. Fires. A perfect game! Roy Halladay is... 
Later that year, Halliday gave every Phillies player a Swiss-made watch for their participation in his historic achievement. That postseason, Roy Halliday pitched a no-hitter in the playoffs, becoming the first player since Don Larson to pitch a no-hitter in the postseason. Halliday was an MLB hero, one of the most admired players in the league. We think we know players because we see them. At the ballpark, on the cover of video games we play for hundreds of hours, Roy Halladay was charitable, kind, and giving. A model baseball player. Off the field, however, he was inflicted with addiction. Four years after his retirement, Halladay was practicing his new plane in Florida when he crashed into the ocean and died. A toxicology report on Halladay revealed he had morphine, antidepressants, Ambien, and other drugs in his system. He was 40 years old. Perfect games often make no sense. On a Sunday morning in New York City, David Wells was partying with SNL cast members and Jimmy Fallon. However, he was pitching the next day in a day game. Throughout the game, Wells said he was hungover and had a massive splitting headache. But somehow, that day, he was perfect. Philip Humber pitched for eight seasons with an ERA of five and only ever got 16 wins in his MLB career. One of those 16, was a perfect game he pitched in 2012 against the Seattle Mariners. Speaking about it now, Humber seemed more confused than anything. Quote, I don't know what I'm doing on this list. My hero growing up was Nolan Ryan, but he's never done that. Seven no-hitters and none of them perfect. So to think a guy like me could do that was pretty hard to comprehend. Just one year later, Humber was demoted to AAA and his career was over. Humber is just one of three pitchers who threw a game in the 2012 MLB season with Matt Cain and Felix Hernandez joining him later in the year. But since Felix Hernandez, there hasn't been a perfect game in over 11 years. This is not uncommon. From 1968 to 1981, there were no perfect games, although Milt Pappas probably should have had one. An even larger gap existed from 1923 to 1956. There were more perfect games from April to August 2012 than there were for 42 years from 1922 to 1964. Perfect games are such an anomaly that no real conclusion can come from these observations. The most famous photo of Yogi Berra is him leaping onto Don Larson after the perfect game he pitched in 1956. But in popular culture, Berra stayed famous for many years, his quotes becoming part of the American lexicon, his likeness being used for a cartoon bear. But being the butt of the joke often hurt Yogi. He had a brilliant baseball mind that this persona often overlooked. In 1964, Yogi Berra took over managing the Yankees and led them to the World Series. Despite a Herculean effort in the pennant race to get the Yankees to the Fall Classic, the Yankees had fired him and hired the man who beat him in the 1964 series, some guy. In 1973, Yogi Berra managed the New York Mets, a team that somehow made it all the way to the World Series with only 82 wins in the regular season. This team also lost the seventh game of the World Series, and the Mets eventually let Berra go in 1975. Ten years later, in 1985, George Steinbrenner hired Barra again to be the manager of the Yankees. However, after just 17 games and a 6-11 start, Steinbrenner brutally fired the Hall of Famer on a road trip in Texas. Barra had to travel back to the airport with the team on the bus, and as he got off, he got a standing ovation from all the players. Barra was irate at George. He thought he had promised him that he would be able to manage the team for the whole season, and here he was, fired before even a sixth of the season had ended. Barra vowed he would never go back to Yankee Stadium, as long as George was the owner of the team. Not for Old Timers Day, not for anything. He wouldn't come back unless Steinbrenner apologized. Finally, in 1998, George visited Yogi's museum. They had a very intense conversation, but George apologized and convinced Yogi to come back. On Sunday, June 18, 1999, Yogi Berra made his first visit to the to Yankee Stadium in 14 years. Don Larson threw out the first pitch to Berra, and the Yankees honored one of the greatest players to ever put on the pinstripes on what they called Yogi Berra Day. In the pregame ceremony, Yankees catcher Joe Girardi asked for Berra to bless his glove to call a good game. Then, David Cohn went where only 17 men had gone before. Dallas Braden was born to a single mother who died of breast cancer when he was in high school. Raised by his grandmother, Peggy, Braden was drafted in the 24th round of the 2004 MLB draft. Most pitchers drafted at this point don't ever make the majors, but Braden grinded in the minors and eventually got called up by the Oakland Athletics. Mother's Day was always a difficult day for Braden. Mother's Day, not a great day for me just because having lost my mom in high school, wasn't a day that I was super excited about, knew I was pitching that next day. On that next day, 
Dallas Braden had retired the first 26 Tampa Bay Rays who had come to the plate at the Oakland Coliseum. He tried it first. He did it. He did it. Dallas Braden has thrown a perfect game. Immediately after celebrating with his teammates, Braden found his grandmother Peggy in the crowd. Speaking on the hug, Braden's grandmother said, he just said, I love you. And I said to him, your mother would have been so proud. And I think that's what he was thinking too. There have been 235,000 MLB games ever and only 23 perfect games. Perfect games can happen at any time, but they almost never do. When they do, stop and admire them. Because just like in our own lives, perfection is pretty hard to come by. Seattle Mariners, Felix Hernandez, the 2-2. He got him! 34 years, 119 games. It's finally happened. A perfect game by 